Hey guys, today I'm working on a small DIY project for Zinc. I'm making him a kind of climbing frame shelf. And I know you guys like me to film even the smallest of DIY projects, so this is less of a step-by-step -step tutorial and more of a here's something I'm making video. By the way, as with a lot of my projects, I am making this from wood, but if you wanted to recreate it and you don't have the tools for cutting wood, you could definitely make something similar from corrugated cardboard. So let me start by showing you some of the materials I have already prepped. We have a wibbly wobbly shelf. This is going to be the bottom shelf of the climbing frame. And take note that I have removed the corner from this shelf for a very good reason. Small animals like hamsters and mice do typically, when they go to the toilet, like to go in corners because it makes them feel safer. When it comes to shelves and toys and climbing frames, it can be really annoying if your pet decides that that's gonna be their toilet. So to hopefully discourage Zinc from turning this into his toilet area, I've removed the corner and uh, hopefully that will solve the problem. Shelf number two is just a kind of egg oval shaped shelf. And shelf number three is another wibbly wobbly one. You might notice these shelves are each getting smaller the higher up they go. I have already varnished the top of each piece of wood. That just helps to protect it, especially when you have a male mouse or a male hamster, because they do like to mark their territory and varnishing wood products just makes cleaning a lot easier. If you can't find something that is specifically pet safe, because there are lots and lots of brands out there and I cannot sit here and name every single brand that is and isn't safe for pets. Uh, so when you're choosing one, if you cannot find one that is specifically pet safe, your two next best options are finding varnishes that are safe to use on children's toys, and there are lots of those out there, or finding varnishes that are safe for use in the kitchen on wooden products like wooden spoons, wooden bowls, wooden breadboards, anything that's gonna come into contact with food needs to be non-toxic and safe for you and therefore is more likely to be safe for your pets. That being said, if you know that your pet is a big wood chewer, I would say to err on the side of caution and not varnish it. Yes, it means the wood won't last as long and it will absorb urine and it might get stinky, but that's kind of a better price to pay than having a potentially unwell hamster or mouse or any other pet. Currently, I have no excessive wood chewers, so I feel pretty safe adding a little bit of varnish onto their wooden toys. Obviously, as I would with any other toy, I do make sure to check varnished toys regularly for any signs of chewing, and I would remove them if I found that. Just because something is non-toxic, that does not mean you want your pet consuming large amounts of it. It just means that if they do ingest a little bit of it, it's not gonna hurt them. I've already cut a few wooden dowels to make the leg supports. This is for the top shelf, this is for the middle shelf, and now I need to cut a couple more legs for the bottom shelf. So I've got my legs, they are all of the same length. I was very careful to make sure they were measured accurately, otherwise this is gonna be a very wobbly climbing frame. And the next thing I need to do, actually, before I put these in, I want to drill a hole in this, a large hole, in order to fit Zinc's food bowl in because the biggest issue I have with his food, and I have this with my hamsters as well, it's just it's something you get with animals that burrow, is him digging his food bowl under the substrate, burying it under the substrate. And I have tried so many different things to stop this from happening. Uh, I have tried putting it inside a larger pot that the substrate can't get into. Somehow, still happens. So what I want to do is put it up on the shelf. I want to cut a hole it can slot into. That way it's not going to be kicked off or moved anywhere. And uh, hopefully this will be high enough up in the cage that he won't get any substrate into it. So I have a little ramkin bowl. I picked up three of these in the thrift shop for, I think it was one euro for all three. So a very good deal. And it's perfect size for his food. So all I need to do is just cut a hole that is the same diameter as the base of this. Now it's very important that it's the base because if you notice there is a lip running around the edge there that's slightly wider so the diameter up here is larger than the diameter down here and by cutting it to the, the base diameter it means that this will go into the hole and the lip will stop it from sliding totally through and just falling out the other side so the lip is going to hold it in place on the shelf. Okay so it's a tiny bit too small but I don't have a bigger hole cutter, so I need to get my Dremel out and just carve away at the edges. I dremeled this to death, made it a little bit bigger, and now it fits perfectly. 
Look at that. Lovely. Now I think we're ready to join the legs and I'm going to start with this top one. Now I will be hot gluing these into place but just to make sure that it is safe and it's a little more secure, a little more sturdy, I am going to create a little divot for each leg to sit in. The woods have all been divoted so we have a little one there, we have one the back there and also one in the front so that I can put the leg from this one in there and one on the front for the bottom shelf with three on the back. And now it's just a simple case of gluing all together. So I've got my hot glue gun here, it's all heated up and I also have uh, my spirit level to make sure that I am getting these legs in the correct position and I don't end up with a wonky climbing frame. I'm just going to fill this area with hot glue, lovely lovely. And then, well that's not straight. My entire apartment is not level. I forget this. And I just hold it in place until it sets. And the final step for the main structure is putting all the shelves together. So here's the dish. There it goes, nice and easy. That's where his food's going to be from now on. And there's one more thing I need to do to it before I put it in Zinc's cage, and that is to add a climbing rope in between the bottom and top floor. And all I'm gonna do is just plait a bit of sizzle string and then attach it to the bottom and uh, then attach it to the top with an eye hook as well. And he'll just be able to easily scale from the bottom to the top, not a problem. To make the climbing rope, I used regular sizzle string and plaited it together. And there you can see we have a nice sturdy rope. And on the top here, I have inserted a hook and I'm going to pop one end of the string through there and I've knotted the top so it's not going anywhere. And the other end, I've drilled a hole in the bottom and I'm going to thread the other end through. And to keep it as tight as possible, I am going to staple it into place on the base. And he's not going to be able to easily access those, so I am not worried about him getting hurt on them. Uh, they're also not sharp, so that's not something I have to worry about either. That is all I'm doing to this design. It is a very simple one, and that's how I wanted it to be. Just three basic levels, a food dish and a climbing rope. Now I can add some chew toys or other things onto this if I want to, but right now I'm just going to go plonk it straight into his cage, and hopefully he'll be awake soon to try it out.